propulsion of CPT. There are two types of forces needed to propel transport vehicles. The first is the pulling force and the second is the pushing force. An example of a transport vehicle propelled by a pulling force is CPT. The pulling force is aided by a cable connected to an electric motor that is located at a station. CPTs are always propelled by a pulling force because a cable cannot be used in pushing objects. Examples of transport vehicles propelled by a pushing force are BRT, LRT, MRT, and tram. The pushing force is aided by an electric motor that is located internally within the transport vehicle. CPT is unique since it is the only system that is propelled by a pulling force. The world of mass transportation can be categorized into two groups, astropropulsion. They are the pull group, composed of only CPT, and the push group, composed of all other forms of mass transportation. CPTs are classified as to from where they are supported or propelled. ARTs such as aerial cable car and aerial tram are those that are supported or propelled from the top. The cable is then propelled to the station powered by a motor. GRTs such as cable liner and funicular are those that are supported or propelled from the bottom. The cable is then propelled to the station powered by a motor. Let us compare the propulsion of CBTs with self-propelled transit. An example of a self-propelled transit is a BRT. Another is a group of rail-based systems, namely MRT, LRT, and tram. In BRT, the propulsion is provided by a diesel engine located within the bus. In the case of electric BRTs, the propulsion is provided by motors and a large battery pack. In rail-based systems, the propulsion is provided by numerous motors under the train. The cabins and trains in CPTs are not self-propelled and depend on the electric motors at the station. This is among the biggest advantages of a CPT for the following three main reasons. 1. The CPTs are now much lighter than the BRT or MRT. They require less energy to move. 2. The CPTs usually need one or four motors per CPT line to propel many cabins or trains. As a result, there is less capital, operational, and maintenance costs. 3. CPTs do not carry engines that cause noise and vibrations. A CPT ride is very silent and smooth. BRTs and MRTs do not have these advantages. The propulsion system in a cable car is not all 100% pulling. It is only pulling between stations. When the cabin arrives at the station, the system changes to pushing by a conveyor. After the cabin leaves the station, the system changes to pulling again. During the propulsion of the cabin by cable, the speed is constant. When the cabin enters the station, the cabin decelerates to a constant speed of 0.9 kph to allow passengers to board and deboard. When the cabin enters the station, the grip detaches from the cable and the tire conveyor system instantaneously takes over. The rotation of the tire conveyor pressing on the cross tie moves the cabin forward. This is a diagram showing how the cabins move inside the station. The cabin detaches here, passing the propulsion to the conveyor. The cabin attaches here, passing the propulsion from the tire conveyor to the cable. This station is still under construction. It shows how the cabins move from the top. There will always be a cluster of 10 to 12 cabins at the station at all times for the deboarding and boarding of passengers. There will never be a crowding of cabins at the station. As one cabin enters the station, a corresponding cabin on the opposite side exits. All the cabins in a line move together at preset speeds and spacing. They do not bump into each other. Everything moves is automatic and moves in perfect harmony like an orchestra. This is an external photo of the station showing which part of the station the deceleration, deboarding, boarding, and acceleration occurs. These are the internal propulsion mechanisms inside the canopy. 
These are the main propulsion parts of a CPT. The main parts of a CPT are the electric motor, the bull wheel or pulley, and the cable. The electric motor provides the energy to move the cabins. The bull wheel receives the rotational force of the motor and pulls the cable. The cable moves the passenger cabins that are attached to it. These main parts are located in the CPT engine room. The engine room is located in a station of a CPT. The secondary parts are the drive axle, the brakes, and the gearbox. The purpose of the gearbox is to increase the rotational force of the bull wheel that drives the cable. The axle connects the gearbox to the bull wheel. The brakes are used to stop the movement of the cabins connected to the cable. Let us take a look at where this engine room is located in a CPT system. In a cable car or cable liner, there are usually three to five stations in a line. There is usually only one engine room needed for every two to three stations. For example, in a three-station line of this cable car, the engine room can be here. In a five-station cable liner, there may be a need for two engine rooms. This is because one engine may not be enough to pull multiple trains around a loop. One engine could be located here and another at an intermediate station here. In an aerial tram or funicular, there are only two stations in a line. In an aerial tram, one engine room could be located here. In a funicular, the engine room could be located here. In this sample aerial tram drawing, the cabin here will be pulled by the motor on the other side. It will be shown on the top view of the layout that only one motor is really needed to be positioned here. The motor will rotate to move the two cabins in a counterclockwise direction. The two cabins will move together since they are permanently clamped to the cable that loops around the two stations. Once the two opposing cabins arrive at their respective destination stations, the motor will stop running. Arriving passengers will deboard the cabin, and then the departing passengers will board. When the travel resumes, the motor will reverse direction to move the two cabins in a clockwise direction. For a funicular, there's no need to elaborate. It operates like an aerial tram. Instead of two cabins moving back and forth in the air, it will now be two trains moving back and forth on the ground. In this sample cable car drawing, the motor located here rotates all the cabins attached to the cable in a circular loop. In this way, it can move the cabins in two opposing directions using only one motor. The motor will continuously operate without stopping for an entire day in a counterclockwise direction as shown in this example. For a cable liner, there is no need to elaborate. It operates like a cable car. Instead of multiple cabins moving around a loop, it will now be trains. This is the actual engine room of an aerial cable car in La Paz, Bolivia. This is a sample layout of a cable car station showing its engine room. In this case, the gearbox reduces the very high rotational speed of the motor into a much lower speed. As a result, the converted lower rotational speed now has a very high rotational force. This force is used to spin the bull wheel that in turn spins the cable. The rotational force is so strong that it can spin 40 to 50 cabins between stations. Another function of the gearbox is to change the direction of the rotational force generated by the motor. From rotation along the horizontal axis to rotation along the vertical axis. As an option, the engine room at the lower floor can be eliminated by putting a direct drive motor on the canopy to drive the bull wheel. This model does not need a gearbox. This is a picture of a sample direct drive setup. This is the actual engine room of the aerial tram in Halong, Vietnam. It has the same basic parts, the motor, the bull wheel, and the cable. This is the actual engine room of the cable liner in Caracas, Venezuela. It has the same basic parts, the motor, the bull wheel, and the cable. This is the actual engine room of the funicular in Istanbul, Turkey. 
it has the same basic parts, the motor, the bull wheel, and the cable. At this point, it can be observed that the three different types of CPTs have the same basic parts in its engine room. In this photo, the brake can be seen. The brake is used to control the deceleration and stoppage of the funicular. Again, because the machineries are not in the cabin or train, there is less noise and vibration in the train. Also, the operation and maintenance is simpler and less expensive. Unlike the LRTs, there are no operators in cable liners or funiculars. There are only cameras inside and outside the train to monitor its travel. The operators are deployed at the stations. Let us now discuss the propulsion of CPTs. Let us look at the propulsion mechanism of an LRT or MRT. A bogey is a set of mechanisms that propels the LRT. It contains mainly the electric motors, gears, and brake pads. This is a detailed comparison of what is underneath an LRT and a cable liner. These are the parts underneath an LRT. These are the parts underneath a cable liner. The parts underneath a cable liner are much fewer and less complex. The propulsion machineries to pull the cable are in the station. Let us make a hypothetical scenario to be able to appreciate the differences of LRT and cable liner. Let us assume a medium capacity corridor in which a customer needs 3,000 passengers per hour per direction. There will be five stations at an average station-to-station -station distance of one kilometer. This will be the expected average distance in a very densely populated city like Metro Manila. Only four train sets may be needed for this short five-kilometer line. Headway or waiting time between train arrivals would be about three minutes. We now proceed to compare the number of motors to propel the same size train sets of the cable liner and the LRT. The train set of the cable liner is much easier to propel. There are zero motors under the train. The motors are at the stations. The braking, acceleration, and deceleration are done by the machineries at the station. Tires are made of rubber. They will not wear out easily. The train set of an LRT is much harder to propel. There are many motors under the train. The tires are made of steel. It will also not wear out easily, but they are heavy, and they are noisy during acceleration, braking, and deceleration. In a cable liner, you would need only 4 motors as compared to 64 motors for an LRT. But the size of the cable liner motor is bigger than the motors under an LRT train. Let us make some adjustments to make an apple-to-apple -apple comparison as to power consumption. The size of the motor of a cable liner is about 4 times than that of an LRT. This is a ratio of 1 to 16. If we adjust for the bigger size of the cable liner motor, this would still be a ratio of 1 to 4. Using rough correlation, an LRT would consume up to 4 times more electricity than a cable liner. With the same passenger capacity train for the LRT and cable liner, the LRT would need more electric power. The LRT is heavier and has much more motors needed for propulsion. Shown is a chart displaying a comparative electrical consumption in kilowatt per passenger for different modes of transportation. The cable car uses one-tenth consumption compared to that of a metro such as an MRT. One of the reasons the consumption of a cable car is so low is because it is not air-conditioned. We do not have consumption data for a cable liner. It should be higher because it is air-conditioned. This is our estimate, which is about one-fourth. It is approximately equal to the ratio we have calculated before.